All right, what's going on guys? So I've got this Lexus RC, RC300, not RCF. Um, we're gonna wrap the hood right now in rose gold chrome. I'm gonna show you how, and I'm gonna explain what I did along the way. So I'm just in the process right now of throwing a fresh monkey strip buffer on my squeegee. So we always wanna start with a fresh buffer, when we're, especially when we're doing chrome. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're minimizing swirl marks and scratches as much as possible. So this will help tremendously along with wet application and certain techniques which will help minimize scratching to almost nothing. So again, it can only be so perfect, but you know, we're gonna make sure that it's like 99% as perfect as it can be. All right, so to do this, it's pretty easy. You just kind of line them up and you can, usually I do it on a table. I'm just gonna do it on camera for you guys. So just line it up somewhere around the middle. Okay, pretty straightforward. We wanna go fold over half, fold over the other half. Doesn't have to be perfect guys, so don't worry about it. I get a little OCD with these things sometimes and I try to make it perfect and it's off by like a millimeter and then I just get upset, but not worth getting upset about. So these are Monkey Strip XLs. They don't make them anymore. Uh, there will, I will post a link in the description to the regular ones, which I just ordered some more of today. So, because I'm running low, so we need them. Anyways, these are XLs, and what they do is they cover the corners a little bit better, which I like, I prefer. Again, super helpful when doing chrome, don't want to scratch anything. Uh, this will make sure that we don't scratch anything. The other ones come really close to the corners, so we have to be a little bit more careful. Um, it's because it shows it exposes the corners slightly. But again, just be careful when you're doing it. So, replaced, we're good to go. Just let, throw that in my uh, pouch. And what I'm gonna do is make sure I've got some shield guard handy, which I do. Heat gun is handy, which is right here. I'm just gonna drag it over. All right, and I've got my piece of vinyl already cut. It's on the side of the car. So, let me grab it. So, also, also, sorry, what I've done here, let's explain it. What I've done here, because it's hot, it's like 95 in here today, or like 32, 30, 33 degrees Celsius, somewhere around there, 95-ish Fahrenheit, it's hot. Heat activated adhesives don't do well in the heat like this. So what we do is to compensate for that, we apply tack reducer, which I have right here. Tack reducer is, I'll put in the link again, this is going to reduce the amount of tack as, it, as the title of the bottle says. Uh, it's, it's a thing by Vivid and it's non-reactive. So I've, I mean, I've used it on my car a million times and it's never caused any issues with the paints. The haze, it hazes. So you can see this haze on the paint. It stays there. And even when you remove the wrap, it's still there. It's, is it visible through the wrap? No, it's not like Primer 94, where if you put Primer 3 and Primer 94 in a line, you actually see that line underneath the vinyl. You do not see that when it comes to the tack reducer. It's completely, it's very thin. You don't even see it at all. So I've applied it everywhere except for the recesses. Again, we're putting it basically on the high points, which is all that right there in the middle, and not so much on the low points because we, we want it to stick in there a little bit better. Again, not too close to the edges. I've left about an inch and a half or so from the edges. Very important that we don't put it too close to the edges because we need the edges to grab. So let's grab the piece of vinyl, which I have right here. Again, working with chrome, you have to be very, very, very careful not to crease it. All right, again, very challenging to do that on your own. So if you're doing this on your own, if you've wrapped a couple of cars and you want to tackle something like this, get a friend to help you, someone who maybe knows what they're doing, and it'll make life much easier. Otherwise, if you're doing it alone, follow my instruction. So this has a protective cap on it, as all Vivid Chromes do. It's more so for the purpose of shipping. I will install some of this hood with the cap on, so you'll be able to see that. But you cannot, do not expect to be able to stretch this vinyl with the cap on it. It will not stretch. You get maybe half, half a percent of stretch. What I'm gonna do is actually just blow away anything just in case it's kicking around. That'll definitely get rid of any dust underneath, and we're good to go. 
So I keep the cap on, particularly when it comes to removing the backing paper, always just simply because this is going to help keep the film a little bit more rigid. The cap itself is much more stiff and it creates stiffness to the film itself. So as soon as you remove the cap, the film becomes a lot more flimsy and you, then you run into the risk of creasing it as you're removing the backing paper, all right? So we don't want to do that, obviously. I'm gonna come over here. As you can see, I put a magnet down on the other side. So as you can see, I'm keeping it as flat as possible, all right? It's fine, we're gonna cut that off in a moment. It's just where the headlights are. Big old piece of paper out of the way. We're going to get to wrapping this hood. All right. So, it's a mess, right? We can't work with this. It's not going to happen. I don't know if I can actually keep the capping on for most of this. So I'm going to see if I can. Sometimes it can really mess you up. So. It's just not worth keeping it on. So if I didn't have the cap on right now, I would be able to glass that out a little bit better. Pulling in different angles is very important, okay? We cannot keep pulling always in the same direction. kind of see what's happening down here. This is this is the critical point. This is where we can start to get a lot of bunching. So I'm just gonna see if it's even possible to do some of this with the cap on. I might just remove it. Yeah I'm just gonna remove it. Okay. So this is not flat enough flat enough hood where I can leave the cap on. We're gonna take it off. Now, removing this is going to create a lot of static. When I train people, they always shock themselves. Don't worry, just a little shock, it won't kill you. So that's off. Let's redo this now, let's fix it up. So I'm gonna slap a magnet down here. What we're gonna do, grab a corner on each end, okay? Pick it up quick, okay? That's what you want to do. Like a bed sheet, okay? Now, I can actually pull it really nicely. I'm putting a lot of weight into it. I'm putting my weight into it, and I'm putting physical force. So I'm gonna stick that down there. Super, super flimsy. As you can see now, we're getting some good stretch on it, okay? Check that out, right? down to the size, totally fine. I think I should be good here. Maybe not, we're gonna find out in a minute. So, there's quite a bit of slack still sitting there. What I'm gonna do is squeegee some of this. Uh, put my shield guard over here. You can do the shield guard two ways. You can mist it on to the film, like so. You don't want to use too much, or you can throw a little bit on your squeegee. You can do both. Totally up to you. It's not going to hurt to have more. You just don't want to have too much dripping all over the place because you'll waste it. Break this down, top section, bottom section, okay?
leave that other side for now. And we're gonna just pop this up again right here. I mean, sort of relief the air from the edge because we didn't use tack reducer on the edge, right? And it's been sitting there for a bit. So. Try to make your passes with your squeegee when you're doing chrome nice. You don't want to be kind of scribbling all over the place. Usually go more or less in one direction as much as you can. Stop there, stop there. There we go. If I can't go one direction, I just make it so it's nice, okay? It doesn't always make sense to always squeegee one direction. We have to squeegee different directions, but try and make it as nice as possible. These lines you could potentially see, they're just going to create swirl marks in the end. Uh, the swirl marks will go away with a bit of sun or some heat. <coughs> so you can use a heat gun. You got to be careful when you're using a heat gun because you could burn the chrome. But once I clean it up, you're going to see that it's going to be super clean. There's pretty much no scratches at all. So you can see how fast I pick up the film, right? I'm not messing around, I'm just picking it up. I'm not sitting there trying to stretch it up. We need to pick it up. Okay, this is the fun part right here. I did not come across enough. This is basically why I have all this slack right here. This is the problem area. We need to bring the film more this way. So I'm going to trim off some of this excess. I don't need it. And I'm going to create my a better angle for me to grab onto right now. Okay, so that is going to help a lot. Instead of having this pointy corner, I now have this nice full this flap to hold onto. So while I'm up here, I might as well fix up that. myself out a bit over here. Bring it down a little further. Okay. Doing doing chrome installs is basically your troubleshooting always. trying to find the best way to get the chrome to bend without causing damage. So, I don't like what's happening here. I'm gonna cut this away because it's grabbing on. I don't want it to, it's inhibiting me. Let's get that out of the way. Now, I'm gonna add a bit of heat. So I'm at a point right now where I need to add a bit of heat. We don't want it. Uh, it's not plugged in. Should be plugged in. It's not plugged in. All right, no worries. Just plug it in. So another reason why we don't want to use too much um, shield guard is because if we leave dots or drips of shield guard on the surface, what that's going to do is when we heat it is going to leave permanent impressions. It's going to heat up at a different rate than the vinyl. So I'm going to come down, get myself in a good, good spot where I can see everything really nicely. Can't do too much of the car today, it just, we just washed it, so it'll be minimal videos. I can just feel water dripping out of the chrome trim still. So heat gun is always, my heat gun's always in the hottest setting, guys, in case you're ever wondering. You got to keep it moving, though. And this is just going to add some pliability to the film, okay? That's better. 
these wrinkles are fine, I can work them out the other direction. I can accept this as far as having no slack there goes. Where do I do the shield guard now? It's over there. Okay, so this should be pretty good. You see? You see just by stretching across how much less material I have here? Massive difference. My rule of thumb is if I have to lift the vinyl, I make really good use of it. We want to really minimize repositioning of the film. This is another super important thing to remember. So we kind of want to get things done while it's lifted. Beautiful, no imperfections. Okay, take care of this side. This side is gonna be more problematic than that side. It's fine, I had a feeling that was gonna happen. So I lifted up down there as well. No big deal, it came up really easily, so that's not problematic. You're not creating marks in the film. Take a bit more heat. I'm trying to really take my time here, it's hot. I'm starting to break a sweat. Okay, hand over top. This is going to allow me to disperse slack in a much better way, okay? Having your hands over top of the film helps a lot. So this shouldn't move again, because I've pretty much worked this area. Alright. Oh, I need to glass it out. Way too many wrinkles going on. But I can't stretch it into the gap, right? I can't stretch it into the recess. All I'm doing is heating it and glassing it out so that I can get rid of most of these wrinkles. And then I can lift it again and it's more straight, okay? Taking our taking our time is huge here. Okay. Okay. 
So I have to add tension to the film. It's hard because it's a recess and then it, come, it comes out really weird here. Yeah, I've done more difficult panels, so she'll be fine. And just stretch it like one, two percent, not much. So again, I have no tack reducer on the edge, so it sticks a little bit more. Again, it's hot in here, right? Like I said. Time to add heat again here. Okay, we're almost there. I think it'll be easier over there. It's because what I did when I stretched across here, I really messed this side up a lot, so I now I have to troubleshoot it. Increase. There we go. See when I'm pulling on the film, I'm always pulling back on the film. I'm not really pulling up so much, I'm just pulling back on it. All right, made it with no damage. I'm just going to lock it all in right here. Let's see how this side goes. Twenty-five minutes. Got four more minutes before I got to restart the video. All right. So. Throw a little more shield guard down. I think I'm going to go over this spot just to make sure I got all the air out, which I didn't yet. There we go. Okay, 
So this side to me, I have a lot less wrinkles to deal with already right off the bat. As you can see. If we get heavy creases, we can actually push down really firmly with your finger and you can get them out. You can get them out as long as they're not too long. So here we go. We gloss it out, we cut through it just to make sure everything stays straight. It's not gonna stick in that recess, that's for sure. Now, I've got less wrinkles to work with right now. So again, I might have to do it again. Trying to keep my line symmetrical. It's hard to do. It's actually a really hard hood to wrap. It's not that easy. doing chrome. Start the video now, and we're back. So what I'm doing right now is I'm in a, I'm in a bad spot. Okay, I've worked all my material into the center, which is a bad idea. So now I have to work it out. Meaning I worked all the material into this center spot here as opposed to working it out to corners, which you should always do. This is an example of what not to do. Made it. All right. 
patience is very important. But I still can't tell you how many times I get frustrated. in on the other side. All right, we can almost flip this up right now. It's hot. All right. Trim off the back first. Not too much. We don't want to cut into the wiper blades. Okay. You can leave it open. I'll, I'll close it. It's cool. Thank you. All right, we're almost ready to lift this. I'm just gonna make sure nothing's stuck to the car. Right here, mostly. So I'm gonna trim this section off the paint. There we go. Should do that on the other side actually too. It'll help. So what I'm doing is I'm just trimming slightly around this bend here because I know that when I lift the hood, this likes to tuck down and under a little bit. So it's actually gonna pull itself down and maybe cause an issue. There we go. All right. So the hood should basically be ready to lift. Let's check it out. Yeah, that should be all right. What I'm going to do is use this trusty little thing and hold the hood at a certain level here. There we go. Press to work. There we go. Okay, so here's where we take out the glove. It's so strange. Someone called me and I didn't even hear the phone ring. Did, but I didn't. Okay, love glove. We got it out. Time to give the film some love. Corners, watch, okay? Let's get you in here. Alright, let's get you right in there. See? Let me know if you can't see. Nope. Okay. Take the film. Soften it. Just Bring it around. That's it. That's all we're doing here. Gives us a nice shiny corner. A nice shiny edge, a nice shiny corner. We're rocking. You can always hit it with a ton of heat on the underside. Make sure it doesn't move. But you always hit it from the underside, okay? Never hit it from the top side because it will. Um, I want to bring you guys over here also. If you bring it from the, if you hit it from the top side, you can burn the film on the top side. You'd rather burn the film on the bottom side. All right, let's check this corner out right here, okay? Chrome corners, guys. I don't know if I've done these yet with you, but we're about to. Okay, so this guy right here, similar idea. What I'm going to do is just. Bring it back slightly, okay? Look, see, I was just slightly exposed there. Okay? Gently contour the film around, okay? That's all I need. That's all I need. Let it touch of heat, bring it all the way around. 
That's it. That's how we do the corner, okay? There's nothing more to it than that. Let's hit up the back side here. This is a lot of fun. Carrying the camera with me. I'm sure you guys will appreciate it, right? When you take, you don't want to push down on the wrinkles if you have wrinkles on the edge and heat because it will it'll leave little tiny marks on the edge. Not that it's that bad, but again, you don't want to leave marks on the edge. You want to try and make it as clean as possible. So what I do is when I have wrinkles on the edge, I'll just heat a bit and then pull it down slightly, okay? That just kind of gets me below the edge. And then from there, I can use the heat kind of seal the deal. Okay. Let's get over here. Again, same same concept, right? A little bit of heat. Bring it around slightly, okay? Just bring it around. This corner right here. Watch it. Get you right in there. How about that? Okay, right there. This corner right here. Again, a little bit of heat. We're we'll basically caress the film around it, okay? That's all we're doing. We gotta think about, when I, when I think about chrome and how I do chrome, I think about bending metal, okay? Once you get kind of on the underside, you really don't have to worry about damaging the film. You're not, I mean, if you damage the underside of the film, no big deal. It's not a big deal at all. This is a visual modification, exterior modification, all right? So this is not for under the hood. I mean, unless you really got something going on under the hood. Okay, just want to zoom in there so we can show you guys. So again, touch of heat, pull the back slightly, touch of heat. Cold, it's kind of a cold pre-stretch. Bring it around, okay? I can, I can use heat and massage the film around the corner, basically, is what I do. None of this cut and fold stuff. We do, we do corners nice, all right? Cut and fold is for very limited areas where cut and fold is just a better option, but when we have areas like this, we can do really nice corners, and we do really nice corners, all right? So I'm about ready to trim, guys. So I'm gonna move you back. Everyone back to their spots. All right, let's move you back right now. Yes, it looks murky and it looks scratched up, but it's not. I'll show you afterwards, all right? Sorry. All right, let's lift the hood up a little bit higher. Lost my wrap pole, whatever, yellow open, yellow open. All right. I'm gonna start with the back side over here. Again, I always run the back of my blade on the back side of the panel. This way it's not, comp we don't complicate things underneath and around the bottom of the corner. If you leave excess film on the bottom of the corner, what that's going to do is cause a bunch of them. Plain and simple, all right? Sometimes I just like to go for the corners first. Tuck it around a little further around the edge than I normally do. 
this guy kind of came a long way and I want it to make sure it doesn't have to come back for anything. All right, so I just went a little further under the edge just to make it a little bit more durable. Not that it's really gonna matter that much, but again, it might help slightly. Some relief cuts here. Okay, so now I can see this corner or this edge a bit better. squeaking. <laughs> it's an ugly sound. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Just when I hit it at a certain angle it likes to scream. Get a fairly quick video. And let's leave a little bit more around this edge just for safe measure. Side piece. Again, once this is done, we go over it again with heat. Do not leave it all as is. We go over it one more time. This, the hood's too high. Bring it down a bit so I can access this edge better. And I'll show you these awesome corners after. heat and then I'm going to show you everything. finish off the front and I gotta put the hood down so I can get the back a little bit better. Okay. Wipe it down quick, guys, and then we're done. All right. So I'll just use shield yarn, and I'll lightly mist it. We should be able to do most of the hood.
might be a few streaks in it still, but sometimes you gotta go over it a couple of times, especially when you're using Shield Guard as an application spray. It's, it leaves a haze if you don't wipe it all off really nicely. So sometimes you just need a dryer rag. You go over it with a dryer rag and wipe it off. But you need like a you need a slightly wet rag to get out like most of it. It's hard, kind of hard to explain. Use a bit, use a bit of a moist rag first, and then go over it with a dry rag. So I even grab a dry rag after this, so you guys can see. Give me two seconds. There's a dry rag right over here. It's 100% scratch free. I don't even see buffer marks. Don't push too hard with a microfiber cloth if you're using, uh, if you're using it on Chrome. It can, microfiber cloths can scratch, so you gotta be careful. Guys, let's check it out, all right? You ready? So. that gloss so we got no scratches obviously some imperfections this is a daily driven car there's some really minor actually there's only like a few here and there for a hood it's not bad all right no hazing in there all right super gloss all the way through we got corner there we got that guy right there, focus, I can get it to, there we go, all right, we got, oh yeah, and so I just saw some smearing, so there's that, can, that's just smearing from the shield guard, no hazing in this section either, okay, no scratches, as you can see, no scratches, Check out this corner. I mean, for a chrome, those are pretty damn nice corners. You don't need to do them any better than that, so don't expect to do them any better than that. If that's as good as you get them, that's, that's as good as they need to be. Because those are good. And that's it, guys. So that was about uh, 40, 50 minutes, almost long. Um, guys, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see some more of what this car starts to look like as we go along, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I will do some more videos on this, especially the front bumper if you're interested in seeing it, uh, where I do the inlays and the rear bumper, how I'm going to do that in chrome. I'm going to do the rear bumper probably in one piece. And most of the car will be done in one piece. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care.